Hi booktube. Um, so it's technically Tuesday. Um, I haven't done much filming uh, for vlogs um, lately, unfortunately. Um, so I thought I'd start my intentions um, for the week. Um, it's Canada Reads um, next month. So I'm going to read the Canada Reads shortlist this month. Um, and I'm starting with Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club by Megan Gale Coles. And uh, I'm 20 pages in <laughs> so far. Um, and it's, it's really quite uh, good so far. I like the writing style. Um, and this uh, takes place in Newfoundland in February. Um, so lots of snow, I'm expecting. And we're following um, a lot of different people's perspectives I get. And it all takes place in one day. That's all I know going in. I don't like knowing a lot about my books before I go in. Um, so that's enough for me. Um, let's see. I've The last thing I tagged. Let's share that. Iris was meant to want nothing. Demand less, not more. So there's that. I plan on finishing it this week. i got to read one a week. Um, and this is 426 pages, so I uh, better get working on it because there's not much time left in this week. And then I have to finish um, The Great Hunt this month. Um, this is the second book in the Wheel of Time series. I've already started reading it. And so I think I have like 270 pages left in this. Um, there's a, an appendix back here, a glossary of some sort, um, so I'm not going to be reading that. Um, and this is a reread for me. Um, I've listened to the audiobooks before, but now I want to go through and do the tagging so I can go through and annotate and get um, to know these books better. Um, yeah, so this is the second one. We're still following people from Emmonsfield. I mean, not a big surprise. All the books are following those people. Um, but we also get introduced to one of my favorite characters, who's Varen. Uh, she's an Aes Sedai, and she's... Uh, quite entertaining to read about. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to spoil anyone. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what I intend to read. I intend to finish this. I'm, I'm giving myself the full month to read these 200 pages because I have a lot of um, books for Canada Reads to finish. So I mean, just even like 10 pages a day will do for that. And I'm listening to an audiobook right now called How the World Thinks, A Global History of Philosophy by Julian Beghini, um, and I don't think I'll be finishing that this week, but I plan to make progress into it. So it's Tuesday, and I am a little late starting this vlog, um, but I just wanted to tell you what I did today. I didn't get much reading done. It's uh, 6.30 right now at 6.30 p.m., not a.m. Thank God. Um, and Tuesdays are my booktube days. They're the days where I film. They're the days where I do editing and thumbnails and watching booktube and trying to reply to comments. Try to do it all at once. Um, so my system right now, I'll show you, is I have a video currently converting. Um, this is for two weeks from now. I like to try and get ahead. Um, yeah, it's called Annotate With Me. That was a very easy video to uh, to do. And then I've, between editing, um, well that's converting and exporting, I then upload the previous video. Uh, so I believe I'm uploading, um, let's go back to details here. I'm uploading my February TBR. Uh, which is an extra video this month, um, because I normally don't have TBRs, but this month I do, and that will be up, um, well, before this video, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, and then on my phone, I watch BookTube, um, and so that way I can pick it up in comments, and my computer's not being overwhelmed by me doing too much on it. Uh, and then I have the camera in front of me uh, for vlogging. Um, so that's, uh, great. In the West.
West, rights have a stronger and more individualistic emphasis than in many other parts of the world. So when the then Prime Minister, Tony Blair, declared no rights without responsibilities in the late 1990s, even its advocates saw it as controversial rather than a statement of the obvious. Anthony See, Giddens. So I just have a little break um, right now and I thought I'd just update you on what I've been reading. Um, I thought I could do 85 pages a day in um, uh, small game hunting, but uh, I can't. I haven't been able to do that. So I decided I'm going to pick up another one of the Canada Reads books and read that simultaneously. Um, and that is Radicalized by Cory Doctorow. Um, I'm almost done the first part. I'm about 10 pages from the end of the first novella. I, I was too tired to finish. Um, but I read 77 pages of that in one sitting. Uh, it's a really good story. The first story is about, um, takes place in the future where we have a bunch of refugees coming in and their lives are like completely automated to the point like their toaster is branded and it will only accept toast from the same brand. Like it will only, um, like their toaster will only toast bread from the same company that makes the toaster. Um, those kinds of things. It's really interesting and it's really like believable how scary that is. Um, and then I was just listening and then I was just listening to um, how the world thinks and uh, I'm starting to notice a lot of his biases. He does not like Indian, uh, like India. When he talks about India, it's never in a good light. And now he's talking about China, and he's talking about it, and like, oh, China's good at this and that, and this and that, and even Hong Kong likes China, and I'm just like, okay, yes, I admit, like, the thing, the, the book wasn't written before this whole thing that's happening in Hong Kong um, is happening, um, but, like, how do you not know about the human rights violations that are happening in China? Like, I knew about that back when I was in high school, and, like, they have concentration camp set up for for the uh, I can't pronounce it the Uyghurs I believe they're called which are Muslim Chinese people and it's just like Tiananmen Square like dude why are you saying like China's all great with harmony and this is like because of Confucian philosophy but India has a caste system and they're bad and I'm like I agree like you know the caste system isn't good but like dude apply the same criticism please to China <laughs> um, I'm so yeah, that's just where I am. I'm going to keep listening because I am learning a lot. Um, I've just got to keep his biases in mind um, when he talks about certain things. So I'm here um, with the conclusion for this week's um, vlog, and I'm going to start with the book haul. So what books did I buy this uh, week? I actually only bought three um, at the thrift stores. It cost me $1.50 for all three of these books, so 50 cents each. So the first one is The Tree Bride uh, by Bharati Mukherjee. Um, and this is um, about a Indian American who um, goes back to India um, to trace the story of her aunt, her great, great aunt, Tara Lata, who according to legend married a tree. Um, and eventually emerged as a nationalist freedom fighter. Um, so this looks actually really quite interesting story about India. So then I picked up Cinnamon Gardens by Shyam Salvadore, um, and this is a uh, Sri Lankan novel um, set in the 1920s when it was called Ceylon um, during the turbulent closing days of colonial rule. Um, and the reason I picked it up, I just kind of glance at the back. I don't really like to know a lot about books when I go in. Um, so um, the phrase that made me pick this up was um, uh, Anna Lakshmi, a spirited young school teacher, finds herself caught between her family's pressures to marry and her own desire for more independent life. And that kind of made me want to pick that up. And then lastly, I also picked up this Breaking Free, How I Escaped Polygamy, the FLDS Cult, and My Father Warren Jeffs by Rachel Jeffs. And uh, one thing you may or may not know about me is I am fascinated with cults like absolutely like to have a cultic obsession with cults <laughs> basically um and uh so this is a very interesting um story um about the fundamental latter-day saints um church and uh how culty it is 
So, what did I read this week? Um, uh, I'm still listening to um, How the World Thinks by Julian Baghini. Um, and I had an aha moment, and I tried to film it, but it, it kind of came out all garbled. I, in that it made me realize something about the Wheel of Time series. And I really don't like the Aeo culture. In the Wheel of Time series, I don't like how oppressive it felt for me, how um, certain characters weren't allowed to be um, who they wanted to be. They had to follow the rules um, and how they, you know, related to one another. And in the, um, in How the World Thinks, um, Julian Beguini was talking about this, this more Asian philosophy of how a person doesn't identify as an individual, a person is who they are because of their relations to others. And the, the key thing between those relations is to have this harmony. And that harmony is, is what we see in the Aiel culture, um, is that everyone has a place and everyone knows their place and everyone must contribute. And, you know, you are who you are because of your clan, because of your relation to this, because of your role in the, in the, in the culture. So I thought that was really interesting to kind of see that the reason I'm not liking this is because I come from a more Western culture that, um, idolizes, um, individualism and, um, so that was quite interesting to to see how he's incorporating more of this philosophy that we don't always see um, on the surface, um, which is quite cool. Uh, speaking of the Wheel of Time, I read a few pages <laughs> of The Great Hunt. Um, I'm admittedly I'm not making this too much of a priority. I think I only have 200 or some odd pages, so I know I can finish it um, quite quickly if need be, because I want to finish the Canada Reads books. Um, and. I know I said at the beginning of the week I wanted to finish small game hunting um, at the local Coward Gun Club. Um, I have to remember to say that part too. Um, at, that would be 85 pages a day and um, however much I love reading this, um, you can't, I can't just sit there and read 85 pages in, in one go just because it's a little bit uh, depressing. Um, what I want to say about this though is that it's kind of like the ultimate millennial book. Um, it's dealing with, like, millennial issues in a millennial way, um, you know, it kind of has that boomer character as well that, you know, you kind of roll your eyes at and just hope that their kind, you know, retires and quiets down and eventually passes the torch to, um, the younger generation. Now, and it deals with, you know, um, issues that millennials are dealing with, and I don't want to give away details, but, yeah, if you want to know was like to be a millennial, definitely pick this one up. <laughs> and then I finished two stories um, in Radicalized, um, so that was my compromise. Um, instead of working on just finishing this, I'd pick up another of the Canada Reads books. Um, and so that's Radicalized by Cory Doctorow. Um, and this is a series of really, really short novellas. He calls them novellas. They feel more like long, short stories. Uh, the first one was 80 some odd pages and the next one was only 55 pages. Um, and they all deal with uh, different issues in a really interesting way. Um, so the first story was about um, hacking into systems to make them do what you want to do. Um, so for example they had these toaster ovens that would only cook uh, food from the same company. Um, that made the toaster oven um, until the company went down and this girl figured out how to hack them. Um, what well, was also talking about like immigrant and refugee issues um, and poverty. It was, it was really good and I read it all in one sitting. Um, and then the next one is, was um, <laughs> a superhero um, who intervenes when um, some cops are beating up a black man. And um, it talks a lot about the intricacies of race and, you know, the idea of the white savior and um, what can we do about all these racial issues or what should we not do. Um, it was really, you know, nuanced, but kind of disguised as this, like, superhero story at the same time. It was really good. And I'm looking forward to reading the other two um, stories in here as well. Um, so that is my wrap-up for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week.